Nail or beauty school was just the beginning, right? What on earth do you do now? Welcome to the Salon Success Podcast with Monaco Nail Academy. Our topics stretch beyond nails and into all things salon related, business, marketing, and social media, and at the very least hits you with real honest stories about our experiences. This isn't school, this is real life, real business, and really freaking hard work. Before we get started wherever you are, Thumbs up, tag a friend in the comments, or hit that share button and support small business. Hey guys, Penny here from Monaco Nail Academy, and today I'm joined by Pat. Hi. And by Mel. Hi. And we're going to be talking about what we're doing to prep for Christmas, because I'm sorry to say it, guys, it's a month away. We're in the thick of it now. And just a reminder before we get started, please, please, please use my code Patsitive Beauty for ten percent off off uh, for ten percent off all courses. Or you can use Mel's code. Mel, what's your code? Mine is Jungle Nails NZ. If you use either of those codes, then we do get a kickback from the enrollment, and that's how we support the production of the podcast. So please use it. <laughs> just a little subtle like like um headlock at the end there. <laughs> So before we get stuck into Christmas prep, let's revisit a last week's episode. Um, Pat, Mel is currently hanging out her washing. We're outside with her and I'm mad at her because she's in sunshine and I'm in a storm morning. But because she's doing that, do you want to give us a rundown on what we did last week? Totally. Last week was a fun episode. We went over the DOPE test. And if you're like, what? DOPE stands for Dove, Owl, Peacock, and Eagles. And they're birds, obviously, (laughs) but they're birds of personality. So we figured out which of those birds Mel is. And if you want to know which one it is, you have to go back. But it's really cool because we talked about how these personal how these personality types are, how they behave towards each other, and also how we can apply that towards our clients. So if you're like, I want to know how to relate to my clients better, then you should go and rewind and go back to last week's episode. And then you can figure out which birds we are. People can leave comments now, right? So Yes, they can. Well, you listen. Yeah, so people can guess what they think that we are in the comments and then listen and see if they were right. Because you can leave comments on Spotify now. Oh, we should have said that last episode then. Like, leave your comments before you finish. What do you think we have professionals? <laughs> well, next time. Now the we know episode, we did. The episode was real fun, though, because, like, we related it to ourselves, but, like, we were also relating it to clients and, like, being able to interact differently with different types of clients. So that's why it's valuable to you guys to go back and re-listen because for all of those problem clients that you just like don't love like you don't look forward to sitting with this can give you some tips on interacting with them in a different way Alrighty, so a month till christmas um and that means a month till the busy season i know that we have quite a few uh us listeners so shout out guys um also comment everybody just put in a comment Um, But I know it's probably really different for them because we're in New Zealand, so Christmas coincides with the peak of summer, and therefore we have a really busy season because summer is busy with more parties, more social events, more toes being out in the open, and then Christmas makes it busier because you've got, um, like, everybody getting their Christmas nails done and a lot of people heading away for New Year's. For us, it's an extremely busy time. I'd be keen to hear what it's actually like in the Northern Hemisphere, though. Like, is it as busy or is are they just busy all the time? Because half the year it's summer and half the year it's the holiday season kind of thing, if you round up. Yeah, I was just wondering that. I wonder if it's busy for them at Christmas or if it's like our winter and they die off. I don't know. Yeah, right. Because I would assume everybody still wants christmas nails but maybe it's just not like here well they would northern hemisphere errors do you have like end of year christmas part because their summer holidays their school holidays are in the middle of the year whereas for us christmas and new year's are in the middle of the big summer school break so we have like some holidays throughout the year school school holidays throughout the year but everything happens in the six weeks surrounding christmas and new year's so I'd be keen to hear what it's like in other parts of the world as well. 
Yeah, and I oh, well, at least it makes sense for them to get snowflakes on their nails. Like everyone here gets snowflakes, bro. It doesn't even snow at Christmas. We get so many requests for snowflakes on nails at Christmas. It's out the gate. I mean, it's like a fortune. But yeah, let us know. Leave a comment. Are you busy at Christmas time in the US or is that your quiet time? Yeah, because winter here is for sure quiet, but that's not what we're here to discuss. Uh, with a month to go till Christmas, and we, look, we didn't plan this episode at all. This is just going to be one of our typical tangent hours, which, to be honest, is our favorite thing to record. And my favorite thing to listen to, I kind of like a stream of consciousness kind of thing while I'm pottering around doing housework. As Mel's loading your washing machine. <laughs> <laughs> So, Pat, is this your second Christmas as a nail tech? I think it is my second Christmas. Yeah, last year I spent a couple days working out of your salon and just doing clients. So that was really cool. Um, yeah, I was pretty freaked out, but I really enjoyed getting to meet new people. And I had, like, really fun conversations. Hmm. Yeah, people are in a good mood at Christmas. That's one of the most fun things is, like, yeah, there's a few stressed people and stuff, but the vibe is just generally, like, excited energy. Yeah, I agree. Even though it's, like, busy and stressful, I love, like, the Christmas season. I love, like, I don't know, just, like, the mood. Everyone's so happy and they're looking forward to, like, family coming and stuff like that. Yeah, I love it. It's why I also like working on Saturdays because everyone's like, oh, but it's your weekend. And I'm like, first of all, tune in next week for while I, why I don't believe in weekends. But also... The vibe's just different on a Saturday. Everyone's so chill. Yeah, true. I get that. Hey guys, Penny from the future here, and I'm calling all nail techs because Monaco Summit 2025 is just around the corner and it's the place to be. Imagine three days packed with advanced nail tech training, game-changing business strategies, and exclusive goodie bags to take your skills to the next level. Whether you're a seasoned pro or just starting out, this event is designed to boost your confidence and elevate your career. Head to www.monaco.ac.nz slash course slash Monaco dash summit dash 2025 or just search Monaco Summit 2025 for all the details. Don't miss out. Monaco Summit 2025 is where your next career breakthrough begins. What do the two of you do to prepare for Christmas and just prepare for the madness of the six weeks? So first things first, like the very first thing that I do is in usually October sometime, I will send out, well, I use Fresher as my booking software and they call it a Fresher Blast, but like a, a text or an email out to everyone that's on my books to say like, just a reminder that the silly season's coming and now's your time to um, book in. Because especially, like, this is still relevant when I lived in the city, but especially now in a holiday town, um, I want to make sure that my regulars get, like, throughout the year, it, people that live here are very last minute. So you can generally book within the next 48 hours and there will be a booking available. And then on the day is when it ends up full. At Christmas time or across like the six weeks of summer, of prime summer, it's very, very different. And we will be fully booked 12 hours a day and uh, turning people away and stuff like that. So the first thing I do is sometime in October, I will message everybody that's on my books and say, it's time now to get your bookings in from now until your first January booking to make sure that you get the good spots or to make sure that you don't miss out hmm. I don't know for me this year because I'm in a new place right everyone knows by now I'm not going to be like super busy at Christmas time so I think my focus will be more on making sure I'm not getting caught out by the public holidays and like suppliers taking time off over Christmas and stuff like that so making sure I've got enough like removal wraps and wipes and bonding gel and that is a good call because I have not done that and I definitely need to. Yeah, so I think that's more so my mind. Because a lot of the suppliers close, so you yeah. have to order now or you're screwed. Yeah, so I think that's probably more so on my mind rather than like, because, yeah, I'm not going to be fully booked in a month's time. Well, 
I so I foresee it anyway. So my focus would be more on just making sure I am prepared if I am super busy. What about you, Pat? What am I going to be doing? I don't really have anything specific planned right now in terms of preparing for Christmas. I'm just kind of like, I don't want to see. No, I am going to actually go back to my accelerator and magnet stuff and work on one ups and also like my marketing campaign. So that's something I have to look into. And yeah, just action stuff. I was also thinking that, you know, because it's the silly season, we can actually be talking about gift vouchers or gift certificates because people will be wanting to buy gifts so we could be a good present for someone especially if people don't want to bring more stuff into their homes it's an experience present so i think that's good Getting vouchers printed would be something that would be prepping for christmas yeah and school i definitely only have like four or five left of my stash from I think I probably got them printed like two years ago um but I know for a fact that I have four or five left because I sold one yesterday so I definitely need to get vouchers reprinted order more schedule those posts in to advertise that you have them yes schedule social posts so that people know to buy the vouchers and we were talking about this with Jade the other day in our accelerator live class that because she's a beauty therapist, she has even more of a a selling proposition for Christmas, Mother's Day and Valentine's Day to target partners of people who want to get their nails done in her marketing and sell. Like, because what I was saying is I often get people walk into the cabin two minutes before Christmas and be like, hey, do you do vouchers? And I'll say yes. And they say, cool. What would someone like usually get? And that's how you know they're not a nail person. And then Mm -hmm. I'll say, well, it depends because if, if like, this is my most popular service, but if it's a treat, then I would want this and I would want to add on these add-ons because anyone can get like a gel manicure, but what you never buy for yourself is the upgrades. So then that's what I tell people. So we were talking about it with Jade in class the other day about how she could bundle all of her beauty therapy services and create gift bundles that then she would use her social media to target the partners of the people that would want those bundles to be able to sell those so that's definitely and you guys in the accelerator class are currently prepping your christmas campaigns so that's definitely something to be doing at this time of year yeah and the other thing i think about too is if you're like me and have young kids i have to make sure i am allowing myself to have a bit of everything, like enough time for clients, enough time to spend with the family, but also enough time for my own self to have some time off. And yeah, like think about like your actual working time, days, times now, and make sure you're setting it up. So it's ready, you know, if a client messaged you and said, hey, can I come on Thursday the 24th at 8 p.m.? You can be like, actually, that's Christmas Eve, like, no, I don't want to work that day or yeah, cool, come. That's for sure a thing that like I always, I should learn and never do is to set my Christmas and New Year's hours in my online booking system like a month ago because usually the time when I set my Christmas and New Year's hours is when I get the first booking I wish didn't come in. So like (laughs) I'll get a booking for like New Year's Day and be like, what the heck? And then go in and be like, oh shit, and close all those days off. I like to be open for quite a lot because that's our busy, like, especially in a holiday town, it's our busy season. So for me, the Monday that is like nearly two weeks before Christmas, it's like 12 days before Christmas or something from that Monday until six weeks later, I'm open 12 hours a day, every day, except Monday. And I will that, but that's based on where I live. That's not a recommendation. I'm just saying like opening up those hours. I did that about I don't know like a month ago now but yeah usually I'll get a booking for something and then be like shit and then block it all out so if you don't want to work Christmas Eve you need to block that out or if you only want to work the morning when you would have worked the whole day or if you've got travel plans or any of that stuff New Year, New Year's Eve New Year's Day 
blocking it out and then maybe reopening some different hours if you want to make exceptions over the holiday season because for shawzies the week before christmas you can make bank with all the people that want last minute manicures they wouldn't normally get I think we need to make sure as well that we're opening up. Yep, we're opening up all these hours and we're going to work extra hard. But we need to make sure we're getting enough sleep and eating and hydrating. Because the last thing we want is we end up getting sick and then we can't do any clients. And then all that money is just bye, bye, bye. And that's not what we want. Mel just did the in-sync move. Bum, bum, bum. <laughs> um, okay, but that ties in with the other thing that was in my head is... If you have the time now, meal prep, because I know that what happens for me, and this might just be a me thing because of where I live, because I do live across the road from a bakery where I have a tab. And I also live right smack bang in the middle of town surrounded by all the shops. So when I am in the middle of that 12 hour day and I'm hungry and I cannot be bothered thinking for myself, I will just go across the road and get food or Lily will go across the road or Pat will go across the road and be like, do you want anything? And then I think with my tiredness and I go, yeah, I want an ice mocha and a pie and a something and a something like, and then the thing is that you're just pissing away the money that you just made. Like it's, yeah, okay. It's bad for you, whatever. But like, also I just, if I can have had some stuff in the fridge ready to go, like, and just go, oh yeah, actually, I've got five seconds, I can do this. Or like if um, Lexi's sometimes helping me in the school holidays, so I'll be like, Lex, can you go and get me a muesli bar? Like just little things to keep me going throughout the day. Or like if you know that you're going to really crave a can of Coke in the afternoon, like buy the box of Coke from the um, supermarket so it's cheaper and then you just like limit yourself to one a day. Like those are things I would do to try and keep myself in – better habits, not that a can of Coca Day is a better habit, but it's a better habit than some of the things I could be doing when I'm too tired and hungry. Um, but yeah, doing a couple of things like that to set myself up for success for that couple of real busy weeks. Do we, okay, here's a question. Number one, do we like post on social media and remind people like Christmas is coming, book in your appointments? And then number two, do we let them know that we're going to be like, closed for a certain time or do you not bother do you just if they can't book in they can't book in what do you think Mm, six or one half a dozen or the other wait what was the first question do we no do you remind people it's christmas yeah and go like okay now because we're busy we want to do that right i would and especially what i would do is i would contact regulars first and say, just so you know, my Christmas marketing starts in 48 hours. So you should go get your good spots now. I'm giving you a 48 hour head start. And then I'm going to start marketing on Tuesday or whatever. Um, So I would do that because they're the ones that it's less about me trying to make sure they book in because they're going to, they're regulars. But it's more about me making sure that they don't miss out and then end up pissed off when I'm full because they're the people that I want to be loyal to because they've been loyal to me. So I would do that first. And then for sure, I would be promoting like, we're already 50% booked for Christmas. So make sure you get those bookings in or like if you want toes for your summer holidays, like make sure that you get that done before this because there's only... 15 sell on open days between now and new year's so if you want nails done for new year's night like you know i would just start putting christmas and new year calls to action in all of my social media unless i was running a specific campaign like you guys are dun 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 (laughs) i've made a note for myself as well that okay i was I'm doing a sneaky Google. I was going, what do salons do for Christmas and blah, 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 blah. Did you chat GPT? I Googled it, but I'm sure chat GPT can come up with something as well. And one of the things that came up is making sure 
that you have your cancellation slash rescheduling policies and scripts like locked and loaded and that people are aware because the last thing you want is people no showing and then you're out of out of pocket so make sure like i think one of the podcast episodes way back when talked about even doing like maybe a deposit for um for Christmas bookings and for certain people who have done naughty things in the past, maybe even they have to pay in advance. I don't even think that was way back when. I think that was like a month ago. I have no concept of time, so it could have been a month ago. But that is a very good point because we have discussed deposits and stuff for Christmas before. So making sure that you message out to everybody and be like just a reminder the cancellation fee and if you are going to require booking fees or deposits or prepayment or whatever for the week of christmas like i know with fresher i can not a sponsor i can put that in so that when people book online it can apply to just that time period that i can be like during this time you need to take money from them and fresher will do it but if you're going to be doing that you need to do it now i've already had because it's starting to get busier even just in the last week i've had two last minute cancellations that are regular clients who throughout the winter i'd be way more relaxed with because i have more time available because it's quieter and i'm focused more on like monaco and stuff like that and so some of my regulars, if they do reschedule in the middle of winter, I'll be like, yep, yeah, no stress. Like, I don't really care. But then because this week I'm fully booked currently, except for a little bit of time on Sunday, and then I've had two last minute cancellations or not cancels, reschedules, but still counts, where I've then had to say to them, okay, that's fine, but just so you know, I'm going to have to start enforcing the cancellation policy from now on over the busy season. And both of them have been like, oh, yep, 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 sorry. Um, and I've let it slide because they're regulars, but then from now on now, they've had their notice and next time they do it over the next couple of months, they will be charged. So if you don't already have your policies in place, you better get on it now. And if you're like, I don't know how to do that, you can buy a module from Monaco where you can do all of your policies and learn how to try uh, learn some scripts and stuff. So that's only $15. And obviously Monaco runs this podcast. So you should go and support us. Yeah, monaco.ac.nz and then search policies. Um, Mel, what was your second question before? So you were saying, do we warn people that we're, oh, do we tell people about our closed dates? Right, yeah. Or if you're going away, only because mum Mel thinks, I don't want people knowing I'm not going to be home over Christmas time. Or, you know, like. That part did not enter my brain. Um, but the, who I would tell is your regulars, because if you, some of my regulars are on recurring bookings not very many because I used to love that and I don't love that anymore but some of them are recurring like every third Thursday at four so if they land on Christmas day I need to talk to them about that um and a lot of them are already working that out for themselves I'm already getting messages being like hey can I shuffle this that and the other and honestly even for the last like month and basically as soon as Halloween's over they're all thinking about like shifting stuff so I would message regulars and be like, hey, if you haven't already got your bookings in, just so you know, I'm gone from this time to this time. But I don't think you need to put it on social media because you don't owe anyone anything other than making sure your regulars can still get their nails done. I'm just like mama male safety aspect. All of us work from home. So so do you want to like advertise, hey, I'm gone for a month in Bali? Like, I mean, you don't have to tell people where you are. If you can organize me being gone for a month in Bali, that would be great. <laughs> How about a trip to Raro? I can organize that. <laughs> <laughs> what did you say, Pat? You don't have to tell people that you're away from your home. You could just be unavailable. You know, you could be at home. Like you could say something like, I am spending two weeks focusing on my family. People don't need to know that you're just sitting in front of the couch or like not in front of the couch, like you're sitting in front of your i can't think of thing TV? 
Yeah, in front of the TV, of course. I do that all the time. Why didn't I think of that? Yeah, you might just be sitting in front of the TV, vegged out on the couch. There's nothing wrong with that. There's no telling if you're there or if you've gone to Bali or Raro, you know, so. My thing is that I have so many animals and so many staff that my house is never empty anyway. So, like, even if I was away for a month, come on, Lotto, um, someone would be here because I have 700 animals and that means there's always a house sitter or, like, Lily's here working or whatever or Pat's here working, anything. My house is never empty. So yeah. that, I guess, maybe part of that is why it doesn't enter my head. Say, like, we're closed rather than, like, we're away. Do you know what? I would be even sneakier with my wording. I'm always very careful not to lie. I'm kind of allergic to it and it makes me anxious even thinking about it, but I can be sneaky. So I would say we have no appointments available between now and the, this date because that makes it sound like you're full. Ooh, that's nice. Yeah. It's not a lie. Yeah. It's true. I don't have any appointments available because I'm in Bali, but true. they don't know that. Yeah, I mean, even saying you're un like, you know, like we're closed or we're away, blah, blah, blah. It still feeds into that scarcity thing, you know, like things aren't available. So you should go book in now. But it really sells it when you're like, there are no appointments available during these dates. Like, OK, OK, well, like, I like I'm that. fully booked until the 20th of January. True. Oh, OK. <laughs> My next available appointment is the 20th of January. How good. Like even now I had someone message this morning and be like, if you have any cancellations this morning, can you let me know? And I was like, sure. Well, I'm I'm recording a podcast this morning. There's not going to be any cancellations. <laughs> but I didn't need to reply and be like, actually, I'm not open because I'm recording a podcast. I just said, sure. And now she thinks I'm full. Right. Okay. That makes, makes sense. You don't need to over explain yourself. Okay. Yeah. Is that a peacock thing? Over explaining? Being too talkative? Oh, yeah, could be. I was going to say it might be owl-related because it's detail-oriented, but it probably is more peacock-like just talking until you get to the, <laughs> over the talking over the top of thinking. <laughs> yeah, but I probably would have said, oh, I'm recording till 1.30, but then I could probably do it, but I'll have to let you know because, you know, like other kids will be home and blah, 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 when really all I had to say was short. To be fair, my afternoon slash evening appointments are full so that's why I just said a blatant sure kind of thing or like yep we'll do or whatever um but otherwise I would have said my only available space is at 5 30 p.m and then I'm still not telling her I'm recording a podcast I'm just saying and and actually someone someone did that yesterday I said um like I'm we're we're fully booked today or whatever and then she was like um like, well, how do, I can't remember she, how she worded it, but she was like, okay, but still let me know. And I was like, okay, mm, I will, okay. but never will. So the whole story of that was, yes, warn people to pre-book. No, you don't have to tell people you're away in Bali, but also let people know that you have no appointments. Yeah, do what you can to create a sense of urgency while also keeping your safety boundaries. Yeah, true. Hey guys, Future Penny here again. Just a super quick interruption to let you know that if you head to monaco.ac.nz slash subscribe, not only can you sign up to our weekly newsletter, but you'll also get a free video lesson from our course, The Art of Pigments. That's monaco.ac.nz slash subscribe. This isn't so far tangent, it's not even funny, but like the other day, Erin asked related to the accelerator course, like if she had to do such and such a thing, like oh, putting music on her static posts on Instagram, she's like, do I have to do that? I hate it. And I was like, no, you don't have to do anything you hate. Like that's, that's why we're self-employed. If you hate something, you work around it. If you hate all social media, like I've had people do the salon success course before who are then like, I don't have any social media and I am not getting it. So I'm skipping the entire digital marketing section. And I'm like, okay, like I, you don't have to do it. Will your salon grow as quickly as someone who does do it? No, your salon will grow slower. But if that's where your boundary is. Wait, that's so interesting. Cause like you can do digital marketing without doing social media. Like you could still do Google AdWords and stuff and you can do 
content marketing, like posting lots of blogs and stuff and SEO pushing you, that kind of thing. So it doesn't have to be all social media. We often have students that will say, I don't have Facebook, so I can't join the group. And then I'll say, you don't need Facebook to be on Facebook Messenger and be part of our group chats. But definitely three or four different times in the history of Monaco, I will have people do sell on success that are like, I'm not doing it. Like the tone, you're just like, okay, <laughs> not going to argue there. You are obviously very strongly convicted. <laughs> well, I guess if people are... you know, if they've got certain feelings. You never know what's happened in their past to make them feel that way. That's Yeah. true. That's a good point. I'm going to completely change the topic Back to Christmas. back to Christmas. Yeah. Uh, but also on the topic of if you don't want to do something, you don't have to do it is, you know, do you two decorate your salons for Christmas or any public holidays? I do not. I never have. I don't really know why. But no, I never have. I have a miniature Christmas tree. When Monaco used to have a whole thing, a whole training space, we used to get a whole Christmas tree and decorate it completely. But with the salon, I just have, when I bought my Christmas tree, because I used to be diehard living trees and I still am, I still love them. But where I live, the nearest living Christmas tree is a 45 minute drive away and I just CBF. So I bought um, a tree that has lights built into it. So you plug the tree in and it, you don't have to deal with tangled lights or anything like that. It's, they're just in the tree and you plug the whole tree in. So I bought one of those. And when I did, I also bought a miniature version for the salon. So it's got a little like, what is it called? Like a hessian bag around the base. So it looks like it's cute at the base. And I do not decorate it because it's little and twinkly. Like it doesn't scream needs decorations. And we just plug it in and put it in the between our two desks. And it's like our little nod to Christmas. And then usually our town has a, um, does an elf on the shelf thing. So every business that signs up to do elf on the shelf gets an elf from the info center like we get lent we borrow an elf and each shop that participates does a window dressing with an elf and then the info center gives out um like a a sheet you can go collect the sheet from the info center and then you can go find all the elves with your parents kind of thing like an activity to get people to visit all the businesses so our salon is very small um so we do do that but like basically what we do is get the chalk pens that you can write on the windows with and we make it look like he drew on the windows with nail polish and then we just then also my salon's right next to my house and i do put lights on my house but that's i don't know so yes ish i don't put decorations all over the show in the salon the salon is small and Polish, I think, in general, looks cluttery. So I feel like I'm in a constant battle to keep the salon from looking cluttered anyway. So I just stick the tree up and then elf's in the window, lights are on the house. So you only need to do as much as you want to, essentially. And never do anything you hate. Mm, totally. Well, I'm opposite. Like for me, Christmas is like family time. Like I'm probably going to shut the office door for at least a week and not even go in there. So why would I bother decorating it? Well, but this is where I'm a Christmas fiend, so I decorate on the 1st of December mm. or the Saturday after, never before, but the Saturday closest and after. The 1st of December is usually when I do my tree and stuff. So uh, I'm, yeah, I don't know. It's like a month's worth of decoration. Pretty fun. When do you put your tree up? I'm sort of a 12 days before Christmas type of person. And then Boxing Day, she's gone. Oh, I, I agree with that part because like I decorate for Halloween and I decorate for Christmas and I will decorate the second I'm allowed, like morally, socially allowed. Um, but the second the event is over, I'm already over the clutter and it all comes down. Yeah. What about you, Pat? 
culturally, Filipinos start celebrating Christmas from the 1st of September. So that's when the Christmas music starts. Yep. 1st of September, um, all of Mariah Carey's songs start to play on the radio. People start decorating. It's like a big deal. Christmas is our biggest season. Um, and it lasts until like end of Jan kind of thing. So Christmas is half the year. Like, kind of. Yeah, it's it's really intense. Do I do that personally? No, I, in fact, do not have a Christmas tree, which is basically sacrilege as a Filipino. So, yeah, will I be decorating? Maybe not. I really don't feel like it. I don't know if Christmas goes with, oh, I suppose tree. Christmas trees are technically pagan. So originally, so that could work with my witchy vibe. What about client gifts? What do you do with like, do you do a lucky dip? Is it like, hey, it's Christmas. Here's a little goodie bag. Or is it like for your regulars? Mel, you go first because I have opinions. Okay. So this year I probably won't do anything because, again, I don't have a lot of clients at the moment. But last year, I definitely, so I went into my booking system, which I was using Fresher at the time, not a sponsor. <coughs> and I just ranked my clients by, I think it was number of appointments or something along those lines. And the top, I think five, I gave them like a little gift basket. So I had some cookies made, like just Christmas cookies. And then I think it was like just Christmas lollies. And I think maybe a cup and just like, cheap stuff from the warehouse that was Christmas themed. And then I just wrote them each a little like card saying like, thank you for your support, blah, blah, blah. And then I just gave only those people that. But then I came to the dilemma. Do I post that I've given these five people that or not? Because some people were telling me no, because you're going to piss off all the, all your other clients. And then other people were like, oh, well, they weren't like the top five. So either do better or don't get angry. So I didn't end up posting it. But anyway, that's what I did last year. Um, I didn't do any sort of like lucky dip discounts or anything like that. I just did that to show my appreciation. But this year, I don't think I'll do anything. Penny's going to say, you should never do that. You can do whatever you want if you don't want to make money. <laughs> okay, I do believe in client appreciation. I also believe... We are running a goddamn business. Why are we giving presents to people that come to us for business? It's If you've developed a friendship with someone, maybe that's different and there might be people that cross over. But, like, I just don't get why some, some people go so all out and are spending, like, 20 bucks per client. And I just... I don't know. No one has ever managed to convince me otherwise. And I'm just like, I don't get it. Why are we giving presents to, it's a business. They come to us, they give us money. We give them nails. We did our bit. We did the thing they asked us to do. And this is where I'm so eagle. But then also, I'm not saying never show client appreciation, but I just don't think Christmas is the best time to spend 20 bucks on someone. Like if your regular client gets engaged, get them a bottle of wine. How much more appreciative are they going to be that you gave them a little card and a bottle of wine out of the blue that you thought to do that or send them something like they something sad happens, send them a little gift or like they graduate or like, I don't know, like send them something at a random time. Give them a birthday present that they weren't expecting. But at Christmas, like everybody's giving each other random crap they don't want. Like, the teachers all get, like, a freaking coffee cup filled with chocolate. And they all, like, everybody's getting stuff. They're, and it's coming from work. It's coming from school. It's coming from kids. It's coming from family. Like, your thing that you've just spent money on, yes, okay, I'm sure there's lots of people listening that are like, no, I would love that. No, I would appreciate that. No, my clients loved when I did it. Okay, fine. But I just think that they would love and appreciate it more if you surprise them at a totally unexpected time of year, not at a time of year where like, if you like, the kids don't even remember three days later who gave them what, because it all just gets swallowed into like a pool of 
crap that they got. And if you say like, like this year, Carl's son didn't even open one of his presents until like June when we were like, well, if you're bored, why don't you play with that thing we got you for Christmas? And he's like, what, what robot thing? And we were like, the like build your own dinosaur robot thing. And he's like, you never gave me that. And I was like, yes, the hell we did. Went and found it for him. And he's like, I've never seen this before because it's just a saturated time of year. So like, yeah, we don't do that for them anymore. We give them experiences because at least they'll have memories from those. That's so ADHD to completely forget the presents you got because I do that all the time. I just forget about it. <laughs> but that happens all the time, right? And I just think on the one hand, we are exchanging money for nails and we did our bit. So why should we buy thing more things for people? But then I do understand the argument that like, okay, but we appreciate them and they keep our lives living. Fine. Mm -hmm. I just, then the, my counter argument is that I don't, think that's the best way to show appreciation with the most return on investment for you yeah and I agree and looking like I think I would still do it but number one it definitely cost me more than twenty dollars per client um number two you're right like we don't go to the supermarket and they go merry christmas here's half price groceries they don't give a shit that it's christmas time they, they want their money um and then I think for me, I was like, oh, they're all going to share this amazing thing that I did for them on socials and get so much more exposure. And literally, I think one of them maybe put a post up or something, but that never happened. Um, But yeah, you're right. It's so like just, oh, cool, another mug. Like, they don't care. And they're probably not even going to tell as many people about it. Like, if you did something really thoughtful when a different occasion happens throughout the year you're more likely, like, especially if it's an occasion where not everyone is doing something. So like, I don't know, like their, their dog died or something. And like, then you just send them a little pick me up <clears throat> to be like, just thinking of you at this time, they're way more likely to tell people not necessarily posted on social media. Cause I think people don't really do that as much anymore, maybe to their stories, but not like a post the way we used to, I feel do it. But they're definitely going to be like, oh, my God, how cute my nail tech just sent me this. Like, to, like, which is what we want anyway, right? Like, a high-value, low-volume um, mm. interaction. So we would rather have someone tell three people that they know will appreciate it that you did something nice for them than to post to 200 people, half of which are not going to give a shit at all. We want those high-value things. And I think if you did something really nice at a different, unexpected time of year, they're way more likely to tell people. Very true. Lessons from Mel again. I'm not telling people shit at Christmas. You're just trying to survive at Christmas time. Yeah, I'm too busy. I mean, yeah, they probably were like, oh, that was a nice biscuit. But do they go, oh, my nail tech gave me this and blah, blah, blah. No, they don't care. You know what they're going to do is they're going to get into the car rushing to go pick up that other present, then to pick up the kids from the Christmas disco, then to go pick up the other thing they forgot at the supermarket. And the present you gave them is going to sit on the floor of their car until they clean out after New Year's holidays. Mm. And then they'll go, oh, the biscuit's probably yuck now and throw it away. Yeah. And they'll be like, oh, kids, you can play with this Christmas themed mug. <laughs> it's January. I think if you were going to do something for your clients, you need to make sure that you're documenting the heck out of it so you can promote it on socials because we can't rely on our clients to be posting about it ourselves. But if we decide to do something like, I don't know, maybe you like baking and you bake a bunch of sugar cookies and you just have them out there, um, that's pretty low cost. And you can just factor that into your budget or whatever. Um, you can have that out there, take lots of photos and just, you know, post it on socials, like in your stories and your posts, like Christmas cookies, blah, 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 blah. You know what would be cute is 12 days of Christmas. So the 12 days leading up to you closing for the year, one day everybody gets a little mini cookie time cookie and the next day everybody gets a something i don't know candy canes and the next day everybody gets something else and then that you could get away with posting 12 times 
because you could post every day and be like everybody today is getting this for the 12 days of Christmas and then people would comment and be like oh I wonder what I'm getting on Wednesday like you'd get yeah totally you can even have like one day is a lucky dip and that's like You know, people just grab it. It's all like little shit, Cat, like stop hair giving ties. away all of your money. <laughs> it could be like a hair tie. That's like a dollar less than. Okay, but if I go and get a lucky dip from my nail tech and I get a hair tie, I'm not posting. I'll be like, is this trick or treat or Christmas lucky dip? Because this feels like I just got the trick. That's <laughs> just like your cute thing. You can be cute with all of your. negative 12% profit. <laughs> Penny from the future popping in to remind you not to miss Monaco Summit 2025. Three days of next level nail tech training, business tips and goodie bags await. monaco.ac.nz slash course slash monaco dash summit dash 2025. I guess the other thing that I see around sometimes is people offering deals but like Are either of you guys silly enough to offer a discount at the busiest time of year? No. no. I don't think it's the time of year to offer the discount. <laughs> I mean, no, I wouldn't, nah. Because if you're busy, why? Why Why do you need to? Like, people are going to come, especially, like, lots of last-minute ones. They're going to come either way. Yeah, hard. It's like when hotels put their prices up at the busy season, like, I'm not saying we should put our prices up, but it's definitely not the time to discount it. No, and they just do it. They don't, yeah. Like when we went away last year for comps, my hotel was one price. And then I went back there for the pink concert. It was literally three times the price. Gross. And I was like, why? Is it a bigger room? And she's like, no, it's the exact same room. And I was like, ooh, like that's so just yuck. It's very opportunistic. People need it, so why don't, yeah, don't cut yourself short because they're going to come. What's that look for, Pat? I'm just thinking that other industries are so quick to almost be predatory towards their clients. And then meanwhile, in the beauty industry, we're all bending over backwards to, like, not charge anyone anything and then, like, end up having no money and go out of business. <laughs> I think you are mislabeling self-employed woman as the beauty industry because i can tell you right now all of the big beauty brands owned by men in america and stuff are not worried at all it's a certain personality type it's a lot of lack of confidence especially with monaco a lot of our community is not school leavers our average age is 29 of an enrollee A lot of our students are at a different stage in life where they have lost some confidence. They're trying to refine their place in the world. Therefore, we tend to work with a lot of people who need a boost, but there's it's definitely not the whole beauty industry. You think GHD is worried about the price of their hair straightener? I mean, they're a big corporation, though. It's still the beauty industry. And maybe I'm thinking specifically of salons then. Self-employed women. No, because I think a lot of men as well, like barbers, a lot of them charge very little. So it's not necessarily just women. I'd be curious to see their hourly rate, though, because sometimes you can be in and out of a barber in 15 minutes and have handed over 50 bucks. Oh, yeah. Some barbers will charge $80. Like I know some places in Auckland charge 80 bucks, but there are some places that are still like $15. Um, yeah, in Auckland. So what are you guys most looking forward to about the Christmas season in Salon? I think like we were saying before, I just love like the whole feeling of it. And everyone's so like <laughs> upbeat and happy and looking forward to things. And everyone's kind of and uh, what's the word like optimistic about like the new year and what's happening for them and yeah I really love that it kind of lifts me up with them and the weather's beautiful here in New Zealand too like yeah I can't wait I like being busy I like I can't sustain it for a long time but I like feeling rushed off my feet like having direction at all times for a short period of time I like the boost of it yeah I just love like the happiness I guess everyone's kind of enjoying the weather and got holidays planned or time off with their family and 
yeah, it's kind of just a nice sort of break and a break from like school and the busyness of it all. Like, yeah, I, I really love like the Christmas season. What about you, Pat? I'm looking forward to, I'm not really looking forward to Christmas itself. I'm more looking forward to New Year's. I think the start of the year is my favorite time. It's just, you know, that sense of it, everything's new, even though it's like completely arbitrary. Um, yeah, I think that's fun. But I do like that people are going to be excited for what's coming next. Um Yeah, and I'll probably be motivated to throw a bunch of things out and clean after Christmas. So Well, I'm looking forward to that. good good thing for you that we've got our New Year's planning <laughs> episode in a few weeks. Yay. Um, and, okay, what's quickfire one piece of advice <laughs> you'd give to a brand new nail tech for this Christmas? Look after yourself. That's mine. Like, make sure you are taking time off that you want to. Because coming from me, again, I've made this mistake. of not doing that and then I just when someone books I'm like Bleh. you know like I didn't want to work that day and then I get all like resentful so set your working hours stick to them and work when you're working and then switch off when you're not working Mine sounds like it contradicts you, Mel, but it is actually complementing what you said in that I my advice to brand new people would be to have fun because you're about to be super busy for the first time you've ever been super busy. Like even a brand new nail tech will feel comparatively rushed off their feet because all of a sudden you'll have more inquiries and bookings than you've ever had before. So it sounds contradictory to what Mel said. I'm saying do both. I'm saying like, do what Mel said about looking after yourself and blocking off the right hours and stuff, but also like get ready because this is real fun. Yeah, ride the roller coaster, yeah. And then hop off when you're done. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> My one would be get yourself ready and prepare for the holiday season, whether that's printing out your vouchers, getting your policies ready, decorating if that's something you're into, um, and also making sure you've got your hours set up. And stock up on removal foils. Yeah. Oh, yes. Fear of everything in your drawer, especially if you offer things like dip and you <gasps> bum, 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 like contaminate one of your bottles, don't get out. So make sure you have spares of all your essentials. Oh, and stock up on retail. We never touched on that. Like, get your dirty oil stocked up. Get your lotion and your scrub. Everyone's looking for stocking stuffers. Get your little mini everything stocked up. Alrighty, with that done and dusted, before you disappear, like our page or follow the podcast so that you don't miss the next episode. We'll be back next week. Uh, what are we covering next week, guys? Oh, ha, ha Next week's going to be a cracker. No pun intended. Um, this is how Penny doesn't believe in weekends and how, yeah, our normal, like, what's the word? Not vision. Um, Kind of vision. vision. Our normal, like, vision of how our weeks roll and how our life sort of rolls. Penny's like, no, no. And we're going to hear why she believes there's no such thing as weekends. And it's not because I just narcissistically wanted to make an entire episode that was me ranting, because I think that happens naturally through tangents enough. But we did this as a salon snippet. Well, actually, we didn't. We did... A, like what do we do in our free time and we ended up on this and then everyone was like that should be a whole episode so just so you know it wasn't me they requested it for you it was by popular request yeah yes, yeah <laughs> get ready all right until then check us out on facebook instagram and youtube by searching monaco nail academy or follow our salons mine is hard lacquer nz Mine is Jungle Nails NZ. mine is pats of the beauty Have a great week. We'll see you next time. Thank you, Kakite.